Let's start. This is tutorial 8 question 5b. We are now given the DFT coefficients capital X for this value. It is a constant n multiplying by these vectors. Most of them full of 0 except the element capital X 1. This is capital X 0 and up to capital X 3. Our task is to find the small x. This process is called the inverse DFT because in the previous example we went from small x to capital X and now we want to go from capital X to the small x. So it looks like an inverse problem and that's why it is called inverse DFT. You realize that if big x is equals to w multiplied by the small x and if if x is square which is it is and and full rank which it is then w minus 1 exists and w minus 1 exists and therefore w minus 1 x is equals to w minus 1 w small x and this becomes small x so what is w minus 1? And without the derivation, we'll tell you that the inverse of w matrix is actually 1 over n wh. And I mean, if you study the columns of the w matrix, you will realize that they are orthogonal uh, columns with each other. And therefore, uh, wh will produce, uh, sorry, 1 over n wh is the inverse. Anyway, uh, what we are doing now is this. We will introduce the this notation, 1 over n, 1 over n here, and wh here. And you realize mm -hmm. that wh, what does h mean? h is the Hermitian transpose of w conjugate transpose of W. We have already introduced what W is. So WH is simply the conjugate and because the matrix is symmetric, uh, NK and KN swap, it doesn't matter. Now the minus were introduced in the notation of W. There is a minus within the W matrix originally here. Minus minus become plus. So the elements of this matrix is plus. Okay? Now, with that, we know how to fill up the WH matrix. There's a 1 over n here from our original equation to say 1 over n WH is the inverse of the W matrix. Again, we'll use the trick. The trick is this. Most of the elements are 0. So, since most of the elements are 0, we're only interested in the column 1 of this matrix WH. Because we are thinking that a matrix factor multiplication is simply the elements of W scaling the corresponding elements or the corresponding columns in WH. That's the key idea. So basically we have we have 3e e minus j pi over 4 which is this guy multiplying by the column 1 of WH this is column 1 of WH. There's a 1 over n here. And this small n on the top is this n over here. So once we have cleaned up this expression, you can express this as rectangle form. And this is the result. Thank you. Oh, Before that, maybe we'll revise. 
the notations in here. In this notation, we are having the inverse DFT. Basically, we call this the synthesis equation because we have the DFT coefficients x and we want to generate the time sequence small x. We realize that this 1 over nwh is the inverse of the DFT matrix W. Anyway, how does the the matrix vector notation looks like? It looks like this. The small x is expanded into the time sequence small xn. This equation is generally given in a book, but it's not very intuitive. It is actually much nicer to see this in matrix vector notation. In the matrix vector location notation, small x is expanded into as a column vector from small x n equals to 0 to x big N to minus 1. Correspondingly, xk is capital X k equals to 0 to capital X k equals to n minus 1. The W matrix now can be filled in. Again, it is a square matrix. The only difference between the DFT analysis and synthesis equation is this minus sign over here. The minus sign over here, and there's no minus sign in the DFT matrix. They are both W and K N. So you realize that uh, this is the conjugate of the W matrix. Actually, it's conjugate transpose, but because the matrix is symmetric, the transpose ends up doing nothing. This is the matrix. Now, the, again, the notations is important. Capital X is indexed by K going down here. You should view the notations of this row vector as K equals to 0 to n minus 1 to be consistent because we are inner producting this guy with this guy to produce the corresponding xn. So along this vector, with n equals to, let's say, 1, we are taking this whole row and inner producting with this column. Therefore, the index of n equals to 0, 1, 2, must be looking down along this uh, direction, along the rows in the IDFT matrix W, H. Okay? But uh, maybe th this is nice to, to view, but in this question, really, what we are thinking about is that since there is only one element, I think it was x1, right? That is non-zero. Only one element is non-zero. Therefore, only one of the column is interesting because it is this column, this column multiplied by this element to produce this guy. And every other element in the capital X is zero. So we are multiplying zero by different columns and therefore we don't even need to do it. So this is the matrix vector multiplication view which is much nicer and allow us to compute this quickly in any exams. Thank you.